Following the conclusion of continuous voter registration by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, the commission says that a total of 269,787 permanent voter cards are yet to be claimed in Kaduna State. The resident electoral commissioner of Dalaya Damo Kaugama, who made this known, also says the commission registered an additional 537,874 prospective voters in the state in the last few weeks. Kaugama said the commission moved its staff and equipment to emerging communities so they could be captured while the exercise lasted. With me in the studio to discuss this is a politician, Ayodele Adiwali. Thank you very much for finding time to come. Thank you for having me. Why would anyone go through the horrors of getting registered and not claim the PVC? Well, it's quite unfortunate that um, things like that are happening. But one would have thought that at the point of registering, your PVC will be given instead of giving you the TV, I mean, the temporary uh, voters cards. And of course, you know that uh, many of our people live on their daily earnings. So some might not have that time to spare, but that is not an excuse. It's not an excuse. Mm -hmm. Might not have that time to spare to go back following the harrowing experience that a lot of them faced before yes, carrying sir. out their registration. What lessons have we learned from here? Um, we, we had to postpone the exercise by another month. Uh, there were allegations of um, INEC officials collecting money from people on queues to allow them the opportunity to get registered. What would you say are those loopholes that need to be fixed? Well, the lesson learned is that INEC should deploy technology. I've always said these things. Uh, banks are registering people and they are giving you your cards almost immediately. Uh, people are going to get their SIM cards, pay and you get, at, I mean, pay as you go. Mm. So why can't we register and go and, 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 and go like that? You don't need to go through this analog system of, of, of registration. INEC should train its staff more. INEC should deploy more technologies and equipment to make this thing work seamlessly. But there are some who will say that this is bigger than INEC, that we seem to run a system where there is no comprehensive data bank. Uh, nobody knows how many Nigerians there are. There are no information. Unlike in developed climes when you have a social ID and then once that number is typed into a system, every information about you comes out. I don't want to believe that. I don't want to believe that. You see, there are many systems of, 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 of doing things mm. and uh, registration should be an, an everyday affair. It's not a one-off thing or periodic thing. As long as people come of age, I've always said that the best uh, present you can give to your child when he's 18 is a voter's card. Mm. He or she will cherish that for the rest of his life. You understand? In fact, INEC should be able, after capturing data, they should work with the national uh, agency a orientation agency, you understand, and also work with the birth and death uh, department. Mm. As long as people are giving birth, they should be collecting those data and monitoring those individuals. So by the time you are getting to 18, the next thing you get in your mailbox or your SMS or what have you is an alert notifying you that your card is ready mm. or they send it to your homes and, and you get it. These mm. things are not difficult mm. if we put the right structures in place, even if we want to register all Nigerians. This thing should not be more than maximum three to six months if you want to re-register all Nigerians. So if INEC is telling, even though that as, as an excuse, then what would the National Population Agency say when it's time for censor that we cannot capture all Nigerians that, that are living, living in this country and in the diaspora? And that we should move away from, from, from that thinking. There are people out there that can get the job done. Mm. So if those people who are handling the affairs of, of things are telling us that it is impossible, let them just drop their pen. There, there are, are so many people out there. Mm, there are quite a number of reasons why people get their PVCs other than voting as, as a form of ID, remuneration from some quarters. Uh, there are some who would say that the loss of confidence in the electoral system or process of our country is also a factor in this I don't. I don't want to believe so. Mm. I, don't, I mean, watching from the footages from various uh, news uh, media houses and, and all of that, you see mammoth of people still queuing, mm. begging to be registered. So I don't want to believe that. Uh, what I think is that we should make this thing more accessible for people and more easy for people to get it at a very little time. Hi, Adelia Adewale. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you for hour. having me.
in Lara Folayo, TVC News, Abuja. Well, experts say branding has become the most valuable asset of any corporate organization. At a media party put together by top 50 brands and Nigeria industry players, say brands that have succeeded in delivering their promises to consumers and impacted positively on the economy must be identified and commended. They added that the top brands for this year are those that have been able to analyze needs, see opportunities by creating solutions to them, and communicating the same to consumers. We're not doing as much as we have. See, we have a population. South Africa will want to have a population. Every major country of the world would like to have a population. We have bad management, yes. We have our trouble, yes. But let's take advantage of the positive that we have. Now, I mentioned some individuals. There are a lot of people in this country that out of the inadequate, bad road, no light, they've achieved sources. And I mentioned, we have the story of Pato Rankin. We have the story of the Alibaba who was living on this same babish and it's a success today. There are so many of them like that. In the midst of the inadequacy, they make a success of it. Why don't we start making a narrative about the Nigeria brand? From that point, let's tell people that this is what Nigeria is. The brand Nigeria that is evolving would also be part of the good and the negative thing. But the stronger thing about the brand is the people, how the people perceive what is relevant to the people. So why you find us being here today talking and you doing what you're doing? It's that the brand Nigeria, I represent it, you represent it, what we do, reflect upon it. So it's not about somebody saying some nice things about Nigeria just to make Nigeria feel good. It is about our everyday life. Sometimes it's also about how we confront the challenges of our everyday life. And as such, we can then build a brand through our resilience, through our ability to confront those things, through our ability to deal with it. Right, it's time for the paper review this morning and uh, we'll bring you the headlines across newspapers in the country. Uh, we have joining us as usual the managing editor of Gloom TV, Adele Adil. Good morning, Adele. Good morning. Thank Good you morning. for having me. Good to see you. Same here. Great. Yeah. Let's begin with the, uh, with the Daily Trust now. Mm -hmm. Federal government asks uh, MTN to pay $2 billion tax arrears. A telecom company denies wrongdoing as shares tumble. This issue has been on just after days, mm. about, I think about uh, less than a week yeah, after, after the CBN, after the came, CBN out really. came out to, to say they have to uh, repatriate about $8 billion. billion dollars. Yeah, I mean, um, even though I, I think I read a press statement from mm. the public relations person of the MTN um, who said that um, he disputed the figures, you know, mm. from the Attorney General. Uh, and I think he argued, you know, of some $700 million dollars um, which were the actual amount that they were supposed to pay. Um, but whatever it is, um, yes. this, this, this has to stop. They need to find a middle ground because I think as of two days ago, the MTN shares has, had, had fallen by 30%, yes, exactly. you know, and they've lost um, close to $2 billion already. Um, you know, because if we don't fix this, MTN are one of the highest um, employer you know, of, of labor, labor in, in Nigeria. In Nigeria. And mm. so we need jobs in this country. This is yes, not to say that people should the not, exactly, this is not, cost. Exactly. This is yeah. not to say that um, they should not play by the rules mm -hmm. and by the books. 
Uh, and that's why I said it's important that they find a middle ground and fix it in the interest Obviously, of um, Obviously, Ayodele, people. there are loopholes in the system that of allow course. for such you know, uh, things to happen in the first place. Otherwise, in, in fact, I'm sure it's not only MTN that exactly. is fact, guilty of that. In fact, so they, even, they even quoted that law in the statement yeah. that, um, you know, they released. That, that the law allows them, you uh -huh. know, <laughs> to, there you go. to repatriate funds uh, uh, back home. So Meanwhile, Atcon is saying that it's a wrong signal to investors. Well, yeah. Meaning? I mean, the way it is being... That the Nigeria way should not insist that this $2 billion, or is it $8 billion, according to uh, CBN, should not be paid back? I mean, <laughs> for the international community, mm. um, of, of international investors, if you like, they want to see a transparent system. They want to be sure that when they bring their billions of dollars into your economy, mm -hmm. um, they will be treated fairly and justly. They want a system wherein um, they can have a fair hearing um, you know, in a court that is not bogged down by the normal bureaucratic structure that you have yeah. in your country of so course. that I, I think things can be resolved it, um, quickly. Yeah, I think that, that issue has been handled at the time because we knew during the, during the recession uh, when companies were prevented from repatriating their funds. But mm -hmm. that is all over now. Yeah, exactly. But, but this, mm. is, this is just being, just playing by the rules. This what? is all about playing by the rules from the uh, allegations or all accusations right. on the, on the uh, company. All right, let's just move on. Uh, Shakarao dumps PDP, returns to APC. We're still having uh, more gale of defections <laughs> here and there. I mean, it's quite interesting. Um, many of us had wondered how these, boat, this, these big titans were going to manage their egos mm -hmm. um, in the PDP in Kanu State. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, when the likes of Kwankoso walks into a party, what usually happens is like they take all the structures, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, for goodness sake, uh, Ibrahim Shekoro had been the one in charge of these structures in the last four years, and then suddenly, uh, you know, Rabbi Musa Kwankoso comes in, and the structure seems as though it's being handed over to him. I, I know that there were there were negotiations um, to to concede a few positions um, to Ibrahim Shekoro. Mm. Um, some had it that um, you know the Senate seat for Kadu Central was conceded to him, the place of the deputy governor. Uh, probably that wasn't enough. And um, he didn't feel... It's never uh, really enough for the <laughs> politicians, <laughs> is it? Let, it, it let's it, it, just... You know, uh, it's certainly, it can never be uh, enough. Nigeria benefited over $5 billion from FOCAC in three years, as mm -hmm. Buhari is saying that. Well, uh, whether all that is manifesting or translating to the uh, benefit of Nigerians <laughs> is something else. <laughs> Couple gives son as collateral for loan. Oh. I mean, that's, that's shocking. Whether or not, sometimes I wonder, good. is it the fact that issues like this were not being reported in the past. In the past. Or, or it, it, that it's, it's just started yeah. to happen. Because uh, it's You know, the other day we worrisome. read about a woman who actually sold her baby and used the money to buy a phone. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, know, let's people just, even keep children uh, right. for collateral these days. <laughs> 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 it's, really, it's really sad, I'm telling you. All right, moving on to the Nation newspaper now. Oshun 2018, Oyetola Oshun's future brighter under APC. INEC moves to foil vote buying, and AD candidates won't abandon projects. Okay, uh, things are heating up in Oshun. Uh, the elections, of course, uh, come up on uh, this month, mm. 22nd mm. of this month. We'll see uh, how uh, all of that... We're yet to see how INEC is actually going mm. to move to stop to vote stop buying. Vote buying. Uh, because yeah. the social economic reality um, in the country is it, it's a, it's a strong pointer to the fact that it's going to be the real elephant in the room. I, mm -hmm. I don't see how INEC will be able to deal with um, the exchange of monies, um, mm -hmm. you know, how to persuade voters to go vote for certain candidates I think one by of the, inducing one of them the, with money. Uh, uh, you know, uh, moves they're making is to, uh, is it open ballot system? That's what they say uh, they're going to adopt. Uh, well, um, the, the, the point there is the. <laughs> what that work? The, the, it has no, always been open and ballot. And they said no, there will not be um, any handphones or you know um, phones around. I think you need to just, just to polling restructure. areas and it, all yeah, of that. You know, you know, the polling, yeah, the polling, uh -huh. the polling votes are bought in, in, or the polling in, uh, votes are bought in station. two ways. Mm. Um, you, you probably you probably might be able to reduce the amount of vote buying at the polling units. You know where well, it what actually about happens. Before but, people but, get but, but the main yeah. vote you know, buying so doesn't even happen there. Exactly. That's the point mm. we're making. It doesn't so happen at the polling station or polling so, unit anymore. So you might be able to deal with that. Mm. But the real okay. issue, there's no way I see the mm. INEC, you know, being able to deal with that when the social economic reality points otherwise. All right, there's this explosive. 
forgive the use of words there. The headline from the nation. 2019, five PDP governors seeking deal with Buhari. <laughs> <laughs> According to this newspaper, it all has to do with um, ensuring that they retain their seats while supporting President Buhari to retain his seat. Mm. Um, it's not a new thing. Uh, politicians have done that in the past. Yes. Uh, without mentioning names, in, mm -hmm. in 2011, you know, certain deals like that were made in this country where people, um, to retain their strongholds, um, supported uh, the president <laughs> at the time for re-election. So it, it's, it's nothing new. Uh, okay. Politicians are always looking to survive first. We, we have even, so it's all about their survival first. first. Oh, we so have okay. even seen Whatever that. We'll <laughs> yeah, we've seen that play very vividly in Anambra State, yeah. where he has been Abga. But the point there is that the cross-party deals is that for presidency, don't worry, we'll give you our it's vote. All yours. <laughs> but when it comes to the state, Just please leave, for <laughs> leave us alone. Leave us alone, we remain Afghan. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> all right, our Shibajo vice president, Atiku, clash over restructuring. Of course, they've been trying to, uh, you know, be at each, other, each other's uh, throats over what exactly their definition of I mean, restructuring uh, I, I is. I, I don't um, think it, it's more of a clash as it is a contest of ideas. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't like the word clash. Okay. Uh, well, know, what we the want nation to see, decided yeah, to use the it, word clash. clash. And, and I, I don't like that. I mean, it's a contest <laughs> of ideas and that's what you expect, yeah. you know, in, in your political environment where, yeah. you know, people debate ideas in the public and it's beautiful to see, okay. um, you know, that they are, they are going at each other's ideas. All right, let's see whose idea will carry the day. <laughs> exactly. APC to pick presidential candidates September 20. All right. Uh, obviously, by September 20, we will know exactly who the APC <coughs> will be picking. But is that obvious? <laughs> well, <laughs> in, politics, obvious in politics, they say 24 hours is a whole lot of time. Exactly. Anything exactly. can happen. Okay. Exactly. And, and uh, uh, we're just going through uh, a news report. A report that just, we just saw now, not, not long, saying that uh, someone was saying, sorry, I cannot afford the, the, the 55, 55 million, million naira. Naira for the forms and all of that. So, but we'll, we'll wait to see how things play out. All right, a Nigeria-China partnership yields five billion dollar projects. All right, a very interesting one there from the nation. The Daily Sun is the next paper now. Mm -hmm. IGP orders detention of four cops over Clark's home raid. Ijo leader considers legal action. Mm. Okay, I mean that, that's quite interesting because. When I saw the denials, um, you know, um, in the public square, mm. you know, that um, the top hierarchy of the police were not aware, you know, of, of, of the raiding of, um, you know, um, Chief Clark's house. And I was wondering how, you know, junior officers yes. would take an initiative. Would, on their own. Um, on their own <laughs> to go to, <laughs> of all places, Chief Clark's house and, and, and you know, do what they did it just it just left me wondering you know what gave them the temerity or the audacity well there were reports that they had been directed it. by the ig to actually carry out that raid but the ig has distanced himself from it of course uh, this um, officers well, have been we, detained we, we, we'll, we'll find out exactly at the goes. end of the day who really yeah, was, behind was responsible this. for yes. that no going back on september 14 sit at home ipod is saying this Mm. Uh, the point there is, in the eyes of Nigeria, as far as the books are concerned, there is no organization or group as, as IPOB anymore in the books. You know, I, I, I've said this before and I will continue to say mm. that um, whatever they decide to do, you know, whether it's a protest, whether it's a seat at home, it's within their rights. Mm. But they must not shoot themselves on the foot mm -hmm. by deciding to boycott the coming elections. Yeah. <laughs> when you do that, you would have put yourself in the very hole that, that you're you complaining that, you are, that mm. you are in. Mm. So, I mean, you can sit at home, you know, it's, it's your right to do that. But make sure that you participate, mm. you galvanize your people, you make your interests well known, and you negotiate and, ex and support candidates, mm. um, you know, that will put your, your interests yes. forward. In, so in, 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 fact, numbers, in fact, there was an advice to uh, when Kanu, Kanu was around, that mm. when he was still leading his people on the streets, this go with all of the support you have. Form a political articulate, party. Articulate them, form a political party, and change the system. Exactly. Or 
all you have pour it into any of the political parties you feel that uh, you know share uh, the same the ideologies the same that you idea that like, yeah, like you that have you and for. and change the system instead of uh, complaining that's the way to go yeah. really okay let's move on now 2019 david mark donald duke joined presidential race in pdp and sdp mm -hmm. respectively <laughs> okay we see having more and more and more presidential aspirants yeah 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 i mean you know the number the, is increasing yeah but from the from the pdp point of view um, mm -hmm. you can see it's a tactical move uh, on, the, on the part of the PDP. How? You see that most of these people who are coming out to run mm -hmm. um, are not necessarily going to go all the way. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. you know, but they are doing that um, to close the gap on, on setting um, constituencies in the country to key in setting regions uh, um, um, for the PDP. When you have a David Mark who's running for president, you're sure that he's going to rally the north central states mm. around him. And if you can secure that, at, at, at the right time, you collapse it into one. Mm. You know, so these candidates, are, they're, they're trying to spread themselves around, to capitalize on each other's popularity. Oh, won't in whatever they be spreading region. themselves too thin? No, 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 because uh, at the end of the day, they are going to collapse. They are going to collapse together. They are going okay. to collapse at the end All of right. the day. Yes. The APC begins primary September 20 with presidential, insists on 45 million, 22 million, Seven million and three million nomination fees. That's hmm. for the president, for the governor, for the senate, and for house of reps. Okay, forty-five million. I mean, you, that's, you, that's you, a lot. You, but I, I wonder you, why you. does the, why does nomination forms have to cost that much? I mean, you ask yourself you, it, <laughs> the contradiction. The contradiction, sir, is, is is startling. First of all, this is a party that said it's supposed to be progressive, and uh, your 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 nomination forms is four times mm -hmm. that of the, the PDP. Secondly, the party is being led um, by a former leader of the labor union who <laughs> would have argued all his life, mm -hmm. you know, against such, a against thing. such a thing. And you lead a progressive party that, that hikes its nomination from at 45 million. It, it's, just, it's just the contradiction is just really startling. And we cannot, the ruling party cannot afford to send a wrong signal to the Nigerian people mm. to stifle the opportunities of young people within that party. Mm. Um, to clip the ambition, to, to clip uh, uh, um, the aspirations for the various offices that they intend to see. And speaking of well, young people, the, the um, not too young to run uh, group renamed uh, Ready to Run have actually been recommending one millionaire for the uh, you know nomination forms for the presidential, and they've of course brought it down. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it, governorship it, and all and of that. And it remains a recommendation. Yeah, it <laughs> remains uh, un unfortunately. As but when we say we're fighting <laughs> corruption, what? Maybe APC really has to explain to us where they expect people who are interested in presidential, you know, uh, seat. Uh, you, I, I, where I they expect them to, to, to get, get that, that kind, of, kind money. of money. I, I think the problem again is is the is is the, is the debt of um, civil society and treasure groups mm. in, in the country. Um, and they allow. We don't seem to be hearing yeah, much they, from they them. They allow these people to get away with okay, these things uh, easily. Otherwise, all right. they should be answering tough questions. To the New Telegraph now, police raid Clark's residence, accuse Ijo leader of stockpiling arms and ammunition. Ex-minister, it's ridiculous to accuse me of selling arms. IG orders detention of four policemen and informants, uh, in parentheses, and Southern Northern leaders, Pandev Kik. Of course, after searching uh, Clark's residence, there was no evidence <laughs> of um, arms or anything of the sort. We'll, we'll see how this one uh, pans out. Uh, Nigeria has benefited five billion dollars projects from China, says President Buhari. Shekarao Dom's PDP considers APC considers. Thought he had already jumped. Okay, okay. Um, 2019. Why I'm running for the presidency? David Mark, former Senate president, saying that of course says he has a lot of experience. He's been governor. He's been mm. minister. He's been Senate president. He's been all kinds of things. I right. uh, talk about one of those people who have really benefited from. This uh, is Nigeria. Exactly. Maybe he'll have his opportunity <laughs> to give back. <laughs> Legislative aides threaten to shut down National Assembly. Uh, of course, um, that would have to do uh, with their pay and all of that. Yeah. Oshibajo Atiku at war. Okay, so this paper is using war. Again. Uh, the nation <laughs> used the clash. I, mean, I wonder which one is stronger. I mean, Atiku at war over I mean, did, you uh, did, you, did you read? Maybe another, another one would use battle. Back battle. I mean... <laughs> I, mean, this, I don't know if you, if you read, uh, you know, the positions of, 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 of the gentleman. Yes, I mean, yes. They were brilliant articulation of yeah. the ideas. Mm -hmm. and, and 
and, and it was a contest of Well, ideas. according to uh, uh, um, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, the Vice President, he says uh, Atiku's concept of restructuring is understandably vague. Vague. And, uh, uh, vague. well, in response, Atiku says he, Oshibajo, fails to show the wisdom in sharing out $322 million of Abacha funds to the poor only to take a loan of $328 million from the Chinese uh, the very next month. Well, I think um, um, former Vice President Atiku has made his position clear on restructuring. I think he's debated it elaborately. Mm. He's put out all the points on the table. Yes. Um, and I don't think his ideas are clear. I, I do not think his ideas, you know, as, as vague, vague. As, as the VP, you know, mm. has claimed to be. Unfortunately okay. for the Vice President, he sits um, in power in the government that promised to restructure the country and has not done that, but funded um, or supported... Um, some sort of a town hall. Well, what do they call that? You know, when the consultation of the the national, um, you know, when they send people around the country mm. to get ideas for restructuring, mm. they submitted the report, and it's now back to the dustbin. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. The the punch is our last paper now. PDP writes UK German leaders says Buhari abusing rule of law. PDP is taking its pettiness to a ridiculous level. APC is saying that. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what the UK and German leaders can do yeah. in about, this regard. I mean, it's it's becoming it's becoming laughable that for everything that happens in your country, mm. you want to tag, you know, the British and uh, the prime mm. minister or the German chancellor or the United or Nations. United Nations. Yeah. I mean, it's it's becoming lazy on the part of the opposition, mm. and they have to step up. If, if you have to, to contest, um, you know, setting positions that you're not comfortable with. All right. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, yes, there yes. are apparatus which you can exhaust within your country and not okay. running out the door every Ayo single Dele time. Adio, thank you so much. Managing Editor, Gloom TV. Thank uh, of you course, for having we're still retaining you as we look at uh, uh, Huriwa, that's a Human Rights Writers Association, uh, tackling Buhari over killings in the country. Who exactly is to blame for killings uh, perpetrated by herdsmen across the country? The Human Rights Writers Association thinks it is Nigeria's president, Muhammadu Buhari. We'll take that next after that. Stay with us. Right, you're welcome back. President Mohamed Buhari is getting serious heat from the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria. The association is tackling President Buhari over the killing of mm. Nigerians by suspected herdsmen across the country. Yeah, the pro-democracy group says the president should blame himself rather than the media for escalation in acts of terrorism as his refusal to declare leaders of the Mieti Allah Cattle Breeders Association as terrorists and the manner with which he, he has so far handled the attacks has emboldened the herdsmen. The group was reacting to a statement by the president in China in which he blamed the media for representing or misrepresenting the facts regarding the attacks. The president also attributed the attacks by herdsmen on the shrinking of the Lake Chad. Reports say herdsmen have killed more, uh, more people than Boko Haram terrorists this year alone. Well, we still have Ayodele Adio very much with us in the studio here. Um, thanks for remaining with us and giving us uh, most of your time this morning. Now, let's even try to uh, quote what the president said uh, to his Nigerian audience there in China. Um, you know, among other things, that the members of the press in Nigeria do not make enough efforts to study the historical antecedents of issues that are creating national uh, problems uh, for us. And I'm wondering what exactly are the historical uh, antecedents <laughs> that the president is talking about? And um, yeah. I mean, um, you know, from the president's um, you know, point of view, I, I think I kind of understand where he's coming from because sometimes, um, you know, the reporting of this crisis have not been, um, in, certain, in certain regards, uh, it's been, what would you call it now? It's, it's been stereotypic. Um, you know, some, some writers mm. who do not really understand um, certain peculiarities in certain communities um, have somewhat reported it in some sort of a way, you know, that looks, that seems to paint one part black and, and, you know, and the other white. Uh, because some of these clashes have actually happened 
um, for hundreds and hundreds of, of years or for a very long period mm. between host, communi host agrarian communities and, you know, and cattle rarers. rarers. It's, it's been on for a very long time. But to the part where I, I disagree, you know, with the president is whether or not they report whatever they report. Mm -hmm. The box still stops at your table to deal, you know, with, with the crisis, you know, at the end of the day. But it does look like it's, it's, it's continued to grow. Um, people continue to lose their lives by the day. Mm -hmm. And um, you are in charge of the life and security, the welfare and security of every Nigerian. And on that count, it does seem that um, the government is failing the Nigerian people because... Yeah. It, 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 is, it is very um, concerning, let me say, that from the government agencies, what they give as reasons for all of this tend to differ at every time. When you say one time, it is the shrinking of Lake Chad mm -hmm. that is giving rise to this. Number two, it is uh, the arms from Libya, Gaddafi's uh, arms that uh, you know were pro proliferated that is responsible for it. Another time, they are from Mali and they are from Senegal or they are from Sierra Leone or they are people from different countries, as the case may be. Mm -hmm. Other times, you call them different things. Other times, mm -hmm. in fact, you blame politicians who are opposition politicians for sponsoring all of this. And at other times, you say, look, you are neighbors for crying out exactly. loud. Exactly. Can Accept you just people. accommodate <laughs> each other? When you, have, when you have all of these reasons, points, from the same, from the same source yeah. as government or, or as the leader of the country, mm -hmm. How, how do we decipher that? How will Nigerians have confidence in the ability or, or, or having the confidence of the fact that the leadership knows directly and knows exactly what the issue is? I think, uh, unfortunately for, for the government, they seem to look at all of these moving parts as isolated mm -hmm. cases, and, and they don't see the whole picture. Um, these are, are component parts that all sum up to what has become a security problem for us. Mm. And they are all on the table, and you need to see them as one whole. You know, the fact that um, the, shrink, the shrinking of the Lake Chad Basin, of course, is a critical factor, because close to 80% you know, of the water in that region mm. has, has uh, dried, dried up. up. Mm. So, so that's, that's, a real, that's the real problem, uh, because you have more people contesting for the little resources that you have there. You also have a situation where, in that same region, you have millions of young out-of-school children who are roaming the streets uh, 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 in northern Nigeria, who have no food, no shelter, no opportunity mm. whatsoever. And the poverty there is startling. Yeah. You, have, you, you have regions there where you have poverty rates in the states for close, as high as 90%. So poverty is also a problem. Um, you have the fact that, of course, the collapse in Libya allowed light arms to come into the country. Mm -hmm. That also is a problem. Your porous borders, the fact that the mm. inability of you to be able to ban your borders properly is also a problem. And they have so, all come together to so be a So they have all come together threat. to give you a security threat. Mm -hmm. So you cannot keep looking at one of the component parts, just a simple clip in the montage, to always say this is the problem, instead of you to be looking at it as a whole. So you need everybody on the table, you know, economists, geographers, uh, uh, um, security experts, to mm -hmm. be able to form a coherent strategy to deal with this problem. Because at the so absence would, of a coherent would, would strategy, Would it have been real more problem. reassuring for the Nigerian audience there in China if the president had told them that these and these are the things we're putting in place to ensure that security returns in Nigeria so that you abroad can have confidence, you know, to come back home and to add value to, to you know, to the country? I think Instead it, of telling them it is uh, really <laughs> the media that has, you know, over... That has uh, escalated yeah, the issue. Yes, yes. 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 I, I, think, I think it would really have been very reassuring, you know, to tell the global community. Because mm -hmm. th the part that we miss is that you think you're talking to just... Exactly, Nigeria. just the persons in the room. But then you're talking to a global to the community. Whole world. And for every time we miss the opportunity to explain to the world, the global community, what we're doing to make our country safe, um, we're scoring our own goal. You know, mm. so rather than you know put the blame on the table of the media, or you know, or shift you know responsibility, I expected that you would have you know detailed a coherent strategy on how you are dealing and tackling with, with the crisis of, of the herdsmen mm. in your country. People want to see a bold and compelling vision that you have, mm. and so when you now make the case of they are your neighbors, and people can see a reason why they want to key into it. As we speak, there are people in these communities who have no idea uh, 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 what their life is going to be tomorrow. Mm. They're afraid to go to the farms. Um, They're afraid uh, to sleep with two eyes shut yeah. at night because you don't know what is going to happen to you the, the very next minute. 
if you look at the numbers, you know, we keep celebrating the fact that for 18 months consecutively, the, the number, the inflation has been dropping has been significantly. Dropping. Mm. But how come that inflation is dropping, the prices of food is still, still going, going up? up. And, and these are part of the reasons, because people are not going to farms. People cannot move their product from farms into, into the markets. It will even shock you that in a community, I, I saw a report in, in, in Daily Trust newspapers mm. about the death of the tomato industry. Mm. Mm -hmm. How can you have a huge tomato plant? The Dangote has a huge tomato plant, just yeah. very close to Chiroma local government. Mm -hmm. And you are in an area where tomato is massively produced, mm -hmm. and you don't have supplies to the tomato <laughs> factory. What can we reconcile, reconcile that? You are right where <laughs> you have the, the abundance of tomatoes, mm -hmm. and, the, and the industries are shutting down. It's, uh, so it's a real problem you have in your hands. And, and if you cannot make the simple connection yes. to see that, <laughs> the fact now, that uh, people are not from, safe. Apart from the president himself, who may be very busy, thinking about different things, how to handle different things, you know, and all of that. How about the president's handlers? Who know that you're going to, in fact, they have the, the, the itinerary of the president, mm -hmm. they know where he's going and what, what he's, who he's going to meet and what's, where he's going to make statements and all of that. What happens to those guys who are supposed to put the president together, decide as to these are the, the kind president, of questions you these are the issues you're going to this expect, are, yeah. this is how to uh, tackle them and all of that. What happens to all of this? I think sometimes, even though I think, even though I think, uh, you know, that the the image makers of, of, of the president or the people who manage um, the communication of the president have not done such a good job, mm -hmm. I also do think that sometimes we expect too much of them. There's very, if you've worked <laughs> with a principal before, um, sometimes you tell him this is what you're supposed and to say. Goes, and he um, goes totally off. Um, I'm going to say what I want to say. Mm. And there's nothing you can do about it. I, okay. I mean, in any case, you're, it's the president <laughs> of the country. <laughs> so okay. sometimes you, you'll do your job. Um, but it, it's left to the principal. But of uh, course, Huriwa has been, you know, raising so many issues, of course, with uh, uh, Mr. President following uh, this statement of his. They, they have accused him or alleged uh, that, you know, Mr. President really has been handling this uh, herdsman crisis, um, Yeti Allah, um, even banditry in Zamfara and all of that, with very soft hands, uh, more or less. And that is why it continues. I mean, over 6,000 Nigerians have lost their lives uh, oh. to this wanton, you know, on, on, unexplainable, yeah, inexplicable I mean, you see, uh, killings. You see, the, the truth of the matter is, you know, in as much as um, um, I do not think that um, you know the president have shown enough empathy, mm. even though I think that um, the president um, has not really you know um, uh, shown that that much of um, you know sense of urgency to deal with this issue. Mm -hmm. The truth is, th the system or the structures in which you can use or the instruments to use to deal with this. Um, um, situation, the, this security problem yes. is weak. Mm. Um, and there's very little you can do with a weak structure. So even if you take out Mr. President mm -hmm. and um, you put Mike Wankwacha as the president of the country, the only difference might just be how empathic you are to the people, um, how aggressive you can show in the media that is, you have to deal with this problem. Is that missing? You know, and that's, that, that's what I'm saying, that's the missing link. But, because, but, but there's very little you can do with an under-policed country. <laughs> There's very little you can do with a poorly trained uh, uh, um, security system. We're under-policed, we're, we're but the I, lack I, of... But, but I wonder if, 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 we are, if everyone is going to agree with the fact that uh, we have poorly trained security agencies. Certainly, when we look at the police, we know that one way or the other, there are shortcomings here and yeah. there. But it is still amongst the committee of nations when these extract of police officers gather on special mission and all of that the nigerian one always comes comes out excellent and we've also seen that when there are special assignments special crack team are arranged to handle issues within days they get results see the special operation this operation that that they handle sometimes in boko haram enclave and all of that and even in, in sokoto or Zamfara and all of that when they go there for special operation, they do we, well. we get results in, mm. few, in, in days. So when it comes to the ability or capacity or the training, it, it, it seems like that's not in luck at all. Yeah, I mean, but uh, where, you're, where, you're, you're, where are we really getting you're, it wrong? You're talking, you're talking about, um, you're not looking at 
Take, for instance, mm -hmm. if you're looking at a 100% population, what you're talking about is a 5% number mm -hmm. that are that effective, that are that you know, qualified. In any case, the argument you're making is to say that Nigerians go to foreign universities and top their classes. Does that mean we have a good educational system in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. You know, so the fact that you have police officers who go out and do excellently well is because they are operating in a structured system where you have all the equipment, all the facilities, all the intelligence. And of course, we're fast learners. We spring up and rise up to the occasion. But we do not have that back here. You know, it, it's difficult. In fact, in, in some of these areas where you have some of these crises, you know, the time it takes for you to capture information, you know, and then collate this information, yeah. It's a real problem. You don't mm. have, it's a country where you don't have data. Mm. So you see mm. that just one component part can have a rippling effect across the country. The fact that you don't have you know, a good data management system of your people, which so is a different agency. all of this combined they together, combine to, together. To, so you give us the kind of result people. we're getting. Okay. All right, we've since been joined by uh, Justice Uhuebu is a lawyer. Good morning and thanks uh, for joining us. Good Human morning. rights lawyer. Good pleasure. morning, yes. Justice. Good morning. Good to okay, see you. so we have this issue on the table now where the president, President Buhari, has been blaming the media uh, for the uh, spike in uh, you know, uh, security challenges in the country. He says uh, the media doesn't seem to understand the historical antecedents. And I'm wondering exactly what that means. Uh, but <laughs> really, I mean, this blame game, I wonder what your thoughts are about it. Well, I think, yeah, let me put it this way, that mm. it's a good development. You know why? Oh, yeah, okay. because uh, he, he's falling back on the media. The same media that they applauded in 2014 and 2015 has suddenly become the enemy of the administration in 2018. That is to tell you the perks we are going in this country. Now, talking about that, does the media work with the executive mm. or are they employed by the executive. So you are indirectly telling us that the media should not report simpliciter what has happened. This is since the inception of this government. They have been looking for every way to kill the media outfit in Nigeria. First, it was the move to establish the anti-media uh, uh, social, uh, social, media. social media law. Secondly, they came up with the buhaha of, um, uh, what do you call it, um, head speech. Oh. And thirdly now, they are now telling us that the media is not giving the right information. So oh. who, is, who, who is fooling who? So you are now telling Nigerians that, and we forgot that as I speak to you today, mm -hmm. not until that law is abrogated, we still have subsisting the... Um, or uh, what do you call it, the, the Federal Bureau of Information Law Absolutely. in existence, yes. Act and Law mm -hmm. in existence. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where the, the president is coming from. The problem we have in this administration, they speak from both sides of their mouth. They well. talk one thing today and talk another thing tomorrow. But that's why I say that I like what is happening. And simplicity, we should also look at it this way. If we must continue in democracy, the, if I, the media are not even doing anything in